Hey everybody, all right, Professor Calderon here, and we are going to talk about <clears throat> VFX, which stands for visual effects. And visual effects are basically, I'm pretty sure you all know it, those are those impossible scenes that have no, <laughs> no uh, grounding in reality whatsoever. Um, you'll see people flying, you'll see uh, people having weird creatures on other planets, explosions, um, teleporting, any of those things that cannot be done in the physical world and still sustain a life afterwards is done through visual effects. Um, what I mean sustain life afterwards, like a gunshot. They are not going to allow you to shoot a gun on set. Uh, it's just simply dangerous. People die. So what do they do? They use visual effects for all this stuff now. Special effects is different from visual effects. Special effects is completed on set. And this can be explosives or other events that needed to be captured live in the camera. Um, certain things like explosions and fire Fire especially, because fire has this certain quality to it. So they will have, like say, a special effect on set of a fire, and then sort of supplement it sometimes with a visual effect of fire in post. Okay, so special effects are captured live in the camera on set, okay? The visual effects is usually done in post-production it has to be carefully planned out and executed. It is done on a computer. Thus the term CGI, computer generated images. Okay. Some of the software, the more popular ones is After Effects by Adobe, Inferno, Houdini, 3D Studio Max, Maya, Soft Image, and the almighty Unreal Engine. The Unreal Engine, you guys, is the thing right now of the future. Um, the Unreal level, the Unreal Engine is the next level visual effects. Uh, and let me show you why. Before I get to that, I'm going to go into uh, Adobe After Effects. Boom. Okay. So traditionally, the way visual effects were shot. Well, this is Adobe After Effects, and this is my grandson here. Uh, traditionally, the way visual effects were shot or is shot is with a green screen, right? You shoot the action and you have a green screen in the background. And the green is simply a solid color that the computer can latch onto and pixel by pixel, it will make those that color transparent so you can see the layer behind it. Here I have three layers, okay? The first layer is my grandson right here, okay? The second layer is I have some lava, which is somewhere in here. Here's the lava footage. is the lava there it is and then I have this monkey dancing monkey okay and notice the dancing monkey has the green screen on it too now this dancing monkey of course a monkey cannot dance well it'd be hard pressed to get a monkey to dance like this in real life but this monkey is a computer generated image okay it was made in a 3D software, a software that creates images in a three-dimensional space. And then you can animate that image. All right, let's go back to the monkey here. You can see he's animated. Okay, if I play it, he'll dance. Okay, so we can't get a real live monkey to dance like this. So we have computer generated monkeys. So what we do is all three of these are on a layer. 
And you can have, I mean, when you go into a movie production, a, a, a single shot, it can have, you know, 50, 80, 100 layers of effects, okay? So this is similar to Photoshop. If you know about Photoshop, how you edit photos on layers. So over here, I have the timeline, right? And these are each image. So here's the image of my grandson. And I'm going to pull up some special effects. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, here we go over here. My Adobe has been acting weird lately. So hopefully it won't trip out. Paragraph, character, I think I am in effects mode. I need to be in effects. Here we go. I'm changing the mode. Okay, here we go, effects mode. So here I have my grandson, and here are all the effects, okay? These are all, all of these are different <clears throat> built-in effects in, uh, in Adobe After Effects, okay? And each of these has its own drop-down with other effects, and then those have drop-downs with more settings, right? And then these have drop downs with even more settings. And then all these settings can be animated, meaning you can set, can program it to change over time. Okay, that's where the power of After Effects comes in. And then they have what are called plugins where you can install and it'll expand or give it even more special effects. Okay, so I'm just gonna go on keying. All right, and I'm gonna type in key light, and key light is the term they use for keying out a key color, which is be a key. I'm gonna key this green out. All right, so I drag it on here. Oops, drag it on there. Right now, here's the effect. I'll come here, and I'm gonna tell it take this green out right here. Boom. All right, and there it is. The green is gone. Now I can see the layer underneath of the monkey dancing. Okay. So now I have a third layer here though, the lava, and we can't see that. So all I have to do is activate it, boom. And we should get the lava coming up pretty soon. There it is, all right. And that's the basics of, I mean, it can get more extremely complicated, of course, but that green screen uh, it was the base of special visual effects, you know, for, I can't tell you, I don't even know how long. Um, but now with the volume, it's a different approach, okay? With the volume, you have what's called the Unreal Engine. And with Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine was, uh, Unreal was developed from a video game, okay? It was called Unreal. And uh, it was a tournament style, shoot 'em up, first play, person player game. The software, they enabled it so that the players can create their own maps, their own levels to play on. So there was a lot of players out here with this Unreal Engine, downloading it on their computer, learning Unreal Engine and creating their own game, their own uh, games, their own levels, their own worlds to play in with these games, with this game. So the makers of Unreal kept updating and the software and it became more and more powerful. Next thing you know, they started using it for film, okay? So now you've got the attention of studios, the movie making industry, and the potential for it 
was unleashed. They started pouring more effort into developing the Unreal Engine. And it, it is now the most powerful creation, to, uh, 3D creation tool out there. And it's free, okay? It is a beast to learn. And when I say beast, I mean a monster simply because you have extreme, extreme control over every single minute aspect of the world that you're creating, okay? I mean, this is unparalleled. So, and it's photorealistic now. So now, you know, they're creating stuff like this. And it's all done in Unreal Engine. So the volume comes into place where now we have these uh, uh, everywhere is high definition flat screen TVs, right? So what the volume does is it takes those flat screen TVs, right? It links up hundreds of them. And they install them in a studio and and um, they link it up to they link it up to uh, the Unreal Engine and the Unreal Engine projects this artificial world on these LED screens in a studio environment. Okay, and it looks real. It looks extremely real. All right, here we go. Here's a picture of the volume in action for the Mandalorian. And you can see this is the roof of the studio right here. And these are the LED screens. It looks like a painting, right? But it's an LED. These are a bunch of screens linked together. All right, here we go. Here's another picture of it. All of this, this whole entire room are nothing but screens linked together. And what it does is, first of all, it, it, it saves you a bunch of time in lighting. Look at this, there's very, there's very minimal lighting up here, right? That's because they're using the lighting, the ambient lighting coming off of these LED screens. Okay, so they can key up the lights in a very photorealistic way instantly with a push of a button, right? Saving, I don't know, countless hours lighting this. So before what you had to do, what, how they would do this before was they would get the Mandalorian, they would get them on the same sound stage, right? And instead of these LED panels, you would have, this would be green. Right, he would shoot his scene and act as if, pretend as if he was in this environment, right? But he's really looking at a green screen, okay? Then later on, they would send it to the visual effects department, get on the computer and take out all that green, like I just showed you and put in this background. Well, with the volume, it's already done. It skips that step. And because of it, look at the lighting falling off. Now, I don't know if you guys have watched The Mandalorian, but uh, it's a great show. And here's one of the things that happens with a uh, 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 green screen. You get what's called fall off, okay? And fall off is simply the reflection of the green on a character, okay? For example, um, you can see it barely here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, here we go, perfect. Look right here, you can see barely. It's like a slight green around his ears. Look right here down his arm. That little teeny tiny strip of green is what's called natural fall off. And it's from the, the natural light 
from the green screen, right? The ambient light hits the green screen and it reflects off his skin. Does that make sense? Try to turn this off. So with the volume, okay, back to the volume, you don't get that fall off. You don't get that green. And that, that green, that little tiny strip of green, it has to be removed frame by frame. And it takes time. They're, they've developed special software to take care of it, okay? Now, here we have the Mandalorian, right? Notice his costume is metal. And what does metal do? Reflects, right? So if this were green screen, in his armor, you would have all types of green reflections from the green screen, okay? The traditional method, someone would have to take that footage and frame by frame, remove that green. Very expensive, very time consuming, um, and very difficult to do. With the volume, right? Because the natural light, the, the actual world is projected onto the screens, the LED panels, you don't get that green reflection off of his mask or his clothes. Look, you can see right here. It's reflecting the natural light that matches the background, okay? That's the power of the volume. That's how they're doing it now. That's the latest cutting edge visual effects, the volume. They're using the Unreal Engine, right? They have these hundreds of LED panels linked together, synced, right? This, it looks like a painting, but it's not. These are LED panels. Um, and it's a picture perfect shot, ready to roll. The actors can act within this environment naturally. Um, they can bring in a spaceship in here if they want, a, a three, four, five, 10, 20, 100 moons. Um, they can have crazy bird, alien birds fly around here and it'll look natural, right? They can change this. They can change the sky to a storm on the push of a button. Right? It'll, it'll look natural, right? So that's where the industry is right now. That's where it's moving towards the Unreal Engine, the volume. Um, traditionally, we have after effects 3d studio max stuff like that and that's what they use to create these visual effects uh it's so it's um it's very common look i'm on youtube right now and i just did a search after effects adobe after effects and you get hundreds of tutorials look after effects techniques after effects levitation Okay, the hero landing in After Effects, boom. All right, these are Unreal Engine games, stunning graphics, particle effects. I did this one myself, the fire effect, it was great, um, fun. I also blew up a car, I did a missile strike, a, earth, a simulated earthquake, uh, what else? There's anything, like I said, that doesn't happen in the real world, in real life, we recreate it or create it in, uh, vi with visual effects, computer generated. All right. It's done post-production usually, unless it's the new latest volume using the Unreal Engine. Okay then that's shot in real time and they can uh they can still do touch-ups on it uh in post but they're they're usually there's no need to in the volume 
And what they do is they put real objects in the room, like this tower right here, with the actors. You can see this deck is real. And the actors have a realistic environment to get a realistic performance in a realistic simulated science fiction uh, ambient environment that can be changed at the touch of a button, every aspect of it, the lighting, everything, movement. And as the camera moves also, they can program the Unreal Engine to sense the motions of the camera. And as the camera moves, the background will move in proportion, lock and step with the camera, okay? Never before they, could they do that in real time. Now they're doing these visual effects like this in real time, all right? All right, guys, um, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I would encourage you, if you're interested in this, just download Adobe uh, After Effects. It's, uh, it's part of Adobe Creative Cloud. I think it's like 20 bucks a month, but you get a discount as a student. Unreal Engine is free. It is, like I said, it is a beast to learn. But newsflash, if you learn Unreal Engine, right? I've been told by guys in the industry that this, the Unreal Engine is such a, is such the next level software. If you know Unreal Engine right now, you instantly got a job at a, uh, uh, at a visual effects house. Um, that's how dope Unreal Engine is. And that's how demand it is. Um, think about it. All the movies that pretty much a huge majority of the movies that we see now is visual effects. You know, everything Marvel does, visual effects, right? Black Adam, uh, Avengers, uh, Black Panther's coming out, um, uh, Avatar. These movies take years to make because these visual effects take a long time to create. I mean, you they literally have to go frame by frame by frame because the eye is super sensitive and it will pick up mistakes and jar the audience out, okay? So if you know Unreal Engine or Adobe After Effects, you pretty much, you pretty much got a job. It's like set. <laughs> All right. Even if you know that there's a side of the Unreal Engine and all it does is manages these pixels, right? Not even the whole image. You're just managing the pixels and how they inter interact with the camera. If you, even if you know just that little bit about Unreal Engine, you're hireable. All right. I hope you guys enjoy this. See you on the next video.